McKenzie. There'll be the penalty, and it's on. Tobias comes in. McKenzie's in. Steve Day was absolutely hit by Dindy after he kicked the ball. Now, whether Dindy was committed to the tackle, I don't know. And if he did, I don't think he had to try and hit him around the head. Dindy gone for 10. Hello? Tobias gone too, is he? Tobias going to have a stint in the uh, sin bin for coming in late when he wasn't required. He's gone for five. Crookshank makes no mistake. Redcliffe lead 4-0. Seven minutes gone, first half. And it's with Wharton. Manthe holding it for Cleary. It's tackle still on the 22-metre line. Wharton again keeps things going with Williams. He's been prepared to run the football since the kickoff. Elmore underneath was, Gat, uh, was uh, Robbie Clark. Bishop wrapped up by Clark. Well, on five tackles, they've only gone about 10 metres at the moment. Redcliffe's defence been meeting them at the advantage line, but they run it on the final tackle. Scotty Mackay's in. Beautiful. Oh, opened them up on the final tackle. I think Redcliffe might have been waiting for the kick, but Scotty Mackay decided to hit the accelerator pedal. He's over beside the sticks, and it's four all. What a basic move, but they we said they've looked good with the ball coming across the line and then just the simplest little inside pass. And I think you're right. I think they everyone hung off for the kick and just the simplest of inside passes. So neatly done there. And through comes Mackay and sees the line, accelerates and scores a great try for North. An example of the value of Troy Evans, though. He can slip those passes. See, the thing was, nobody in the Redcliffe line went up to meet uh, Mackay and he was able to gather momentum because he had space and he's a big fellow formerly with brothers Scott Mackay formerly in the Brisbane side and uh, he really steamed onto that ball and there was no chance of stopping him and he made that move from about 20 meters out just a little simple play of changing the direction player going across field drew the defense in and then the hard man coming straight scores the points Guy Harvey makes no mistake, a North go to a lead of six points to four, and there's 18 minutes gone first half. Inside was the call. Madden was wrapped up. Benson. Andrew Stevens will have to hurry. Now, Williams couldn't get the arm out for that because of that shoulder problem. So, may not be on there for too much longer, Wayne Williams. He's played strongly, too, the first 20 minutes. Oh, but what a nice kick from Benson. He, he didn't punch that one. He placed it and he put it there, knowing that Williams has uh, got a bit of an injury. And then it rolls into touch only a few metres out. Oh, they're going to run it. Stevens, 10 short of the halfway, wasn't effectively held. Now he'll play it. Went the wrong side. Oh, and almost threw a forward pass, Greg Manthe, but he held on to it. Now Bishop. Mackay to a hold, and the support play came from Bell. And now back to Cleary. And yes, yes, Greg Manthe. He'll go underneath the post. And what about that from Northern Suburbs? They don't need to go the fifth. They've only got to play the game within the rules and see what happens. North lead by 10 points to four. Well, Greg Manthe scores the try, but the player that sets it up is Gary Bishop. And have a look at this. If this is not his father all over again, that pass beautifully set up the start of a magnificent North play. Look at the pass from Cleary now over the top and how it got its way through two Redcliffe players to find Manthe to run away and score a superb team try from Northern Suburbs. What a great try and what a great study performance that they've put on here today. Look at this pass. Look how Bishop sets the play up there as he draws in and then from then on it's all class for North as they charge down. Great work from Cleary. Look at the pass around the corner here. Nice one. Manthe accepts it, has the pace to go away and score the try. Well, it all started in that set of six back when they decided to run it from their own try line from the scrum. And they've run the length of the field in about four tackles to score underneath the post to give Guy Harvey an absolute sitter of a conversion. 
Greg Manthe, a former Bronco, formerly with Valleys and the Broncos and now Norse. And Guy Harvey. In fact, I think he might have started with East. Uh, Greg Manthe back in the early days. One way of getting a collection of football jumpers. Yeah. Anyway, it's North on fire. They leave Redcliffe by 12 points to four. Now Simpson, the papaya. Tackle by Bell. He doesn't mind a tackle as Bell. Yeah. And then there's a bit of pressure being brought to bear. Redcliffe are starting to show a little crack in the wall. Well, well I think uh, what they are showing is that they just haven't been allowed to settle into their uh, play. And that was Simpson making a bad mistake there, allowing the dummy half on an early tackle count to give Norse possession William uh, Stevens rather he's almost away he is how's the support play it's pretty good it's real good Williams in to score and Redcliffe at the moment are absolutely in big big trouble four tackle Bevan Canning North's lead 16 points to four We'll have a look at it from the scrum here. It was, came from a mistake by Redcliffe and gives North the break. And look at the break it was made there. And then the struggle and Canning, he's got out of the uh, tackle of Canning Stevens and then looks for the support inside, finds the uh, Williams backing up and away he goes, showing no sign of his uh, shoulder injury there. But have a look at the, the way this player struggles. Stevens, he just keeps going. Canning sh uh, should have been able to wrap him up, but he fought all the way to stay alive and then gets the inside pass. The backup support's good from Williams and he scores another great try for Norse. And with that making it 16 to four, it's a lot of pressure on Redcliffe. I'll tell you something about uh, this fellow Stevens. He must be strong because Bev Canning is one of the best tacklers in the competition. And if you can get away from Bevan Canning after he's got hold of you to break away from him, you must be strong. Andrew Stevens, he's in his first year, as we look at Williams put the ball down. He's in his first year with North's Andrew Stevens. He comes from Proserpine. He showed uh, a bit of the Willie Kahn will to uh, mm. to run forward, not give up on an inch there, and uh, it paid off and gave North a try. Harvey makes no mistake, and at the moment it's all Northern Suburbs. They lead by 18 points to four. Wharton again. Now Crookshank does he show any speed? He won't have to. Prothero will be there first, and it won't go dead. Mark, you'll have to have a run. And he couldn't get there. Good chase, Norths. Great stuff from the Devils. I can't believe this is the same side we saw in the Winfield State League. I mean, they were dreadful. <laughs> well, uh, they've certainly come out today, but have a look at this. Pothero turned around and saw three or four Norse players bearing down on him, four in fact. And uh, he's kept behind his own goal for a dropout by Benson. Williams. A try scorer, one of the try scorers. To apply it to Dinty. And Bishop wraps around to Dinty and McKenzie hits it. Right on the quarter way. Oh. Little, little Gary Bishop is in there calling the plays. He's got it in alphabetical order. Well, Redcliffe giving away a penalty of which Guy Harvey should be able to slot from there. Wayne Williams' difficulty with the shoulder again after taking the ball up from the kick. Funny thing, he didn't feel any pain when he scored, Tiles. Harvey bag makes another two. Harvey makes no mistake. That's been a very impressive opening 40-odd minutes for Northern Suburbs because uh, they've absolutely whitewashed the competition leaders. Paul Dinty down in back play, struggling to get to the feet. So Bishop, the pass was too long to get to Elford, so he had to take the tackle. In the last 60 seconds, Cleary, he's away. Hello, Williams, is this try number two? It's loose, it's picked up, it's play on, and Cleary's in right on half time. Oh, Redford, they didn't want that. Right with 53 seconds showing on the clock. North are in to score and it's 24 points to four. Well, the man that scored the try was one of the ones that set it up. He's had an outstanding game. That's him now, Cleary, who backs up nicely from pullback. So following the support play, he's actually put down. Then Williams goes on with it, tries for an inside pass. And Cleary following the ball, never giving up. 
was there to mop up and score a four-pointer, and he deserved that. He's had an excellent first half. And now, what's the support play here? Following the big forwards nicely from fullback, makes good ground, throws a nice pass away, and then coming down the wing, tries to throw the inside pass. It gets knocked down, and then Cleary up off his feet to follow play to back up and score the try. Excellent work from Northern Suburbs. 24-4 with a kick to come from the touchline. What a great first half. Harvey. Coming round, but not quite far enough. All right, that's half time. Norths lead Redcliffe by 24 points to four. <laughs> Got to get back into the game. Let's have a look at Shane Knuth and see what the big blonde headed fellow can do. He runs at 12 short of the line. Now to Gadsby. That's more like it. He's five out. Simpson a dummy half. Changes direction. Here's Tapia. The support's from Barwick. Back it goes to Simpson. He's off for the line. And he's... Can't get it over. Can't get it down. No try. Good struggle from David Simpson. Good defence from Norths. A little bit more enterprising this time from Redcliffe. They tried to keep it alive and finally in the hands of Simpson. Did everything right, got to the line, but just couldn't force it down. But good urgency from Norse in defence. Bishop to feed. Bell's the hooker for Norse. So Bishop. Eight out from his own line. Manfi struggling, or Harvey rather, struggling towards that quarter line. Now Elmore. Runs at another five. Bishop, away to Wharton. Out wide to Bell. Kennings missed him. Simpson came over, and Simpson's hurt Simpson in that tackle. Hurt. Yeah, he hurt himself. He meant to hurt the ball runner, but hurt himself. Now Prothero. At the 22. Crawling on his knees. Simpson hurting that right shoulder. Redcliffe in possession. I'll get the penalty. Can Neil hear Neil Walton uh, in the background calling for discipline from the North players? He knows that they're in the box seat, and he's doing a good captain's job out there trying to hold the side together. Canute five short of the halfway. Gadsby running with a lot more purpose back to Madden. Inside North Territory by eight metres. Simpson away to, to Pyre and now to Clark and he's lost it. And that'll be North ball. Bishop, after he got the tap, gets to his feet. Wharton. Elmore running across field. Dinty will run it over the halfway. Could have been support for Dinty, but Scotty Mackay was too far back. Well, Benson went for the big hit on Wharton. It didn't come off. Manthe's trying to push away Canning. Then he's got the pass back to Williams. And right on the halfway mark, he goes to ground. Short side. Play on. Six to go. Mackay. Oh, Redcliffe waiting. Mackay also nearly cleaned up the referee. I saw David Manson get bowled over by Darren Wolans last week. Neil Dewan nearly suffered the same fate. Now with Bishop to Wharton. Elmore lying under the ball. He's off for the line. He's there. Oh, that's a great North try. Nice pass, Neil Wharton. A beauty. By golly, that's good stuff from North. And Peter Elmore was absolutely fairly flying off the Wharton pass, and they were not going to get to him. And it's all North, they lead 28 points to four. Beautiful work from the North halves, both Bishop and then the final pass by Wharton. Picked up Elmore, and he just put his sights on the board and uh, got to the line for a great try. Pretty ordinary effort from Clark. 
Well, Pothero had no chance at that stage because Elmore was too big for him. And once he got up speed, and uh, he had the back up on the inside, but didn't require it. He just set the, pulled the ears back and went for the line. Great try. And guess who's coming on for Redcliffe? Michael Anderson in 17 is on the sideline. The big hitter about to come out. I think there might be a bit of squaring up going on, T. Well, North's have been dishing it out, and Mark Murray was anxious to make sure that Redcliffe came back with some of the same. And if anybody can do it, this fellow can, and Troy Evans is about to resume after, after his little stay in the bin as well. This has been a very impressive performance from North this afternoon. Absolutely sensational. Tommy must be giving them tomatoes or something, is he? Well, all I can say is that it's opened the competition up in all sorts of fashion. That's no good. No goal. North's lead 28 to 4. Nine minutes gone, second half. So Ashley Tapai has left the ground and Michael Anderson on in 17. Tapai certainly uh, wouldn't be happy with his 50 or 60 odd minutes in today's game because he was fairly ineffective with his running and his defence. But this man certainly not with his defence. Oh. Oh. Michael Anderson, I told you. Well, what about that? Now, Troy Evans is having a go at Anderson. Well, the big hits are great, but if you give away penalties, you're wasting time. Well, a hit like that on a fellow as big <laughs> as what um, McKenzie is, is a fair effort or indication of his ability in defence. And then a bit keen to make a second hit. He tackled from an offside position. Paul, Paul Dinney wanted nothing to do with the Anderson shoulders. He ran towards Dean Ravel. Elmore. The ship from Dummy Hart. Cleary stepping. Here's a chance for Barwick, but he couldn't get away. Knuth. They're in disarray, Redcliffe. No one knows who it's for. Gadsby. They've been trying to belt their way up the middle all day, Redcliffe, and they've received to get belted in return. They just haven't been able to dent the North pack. Clark. They've been killed at the fringe of the rucks and around the halves, Redcliffe. Benson. Silly play. Silly play from McKenzie. On the final tackle too. So Benson finds touch inside the quarter. 28 points to four. North's lead. An absolute hiding here for the Dolphins, the competition leaders. Shane Knuth. Denty and McKenzie doing the damage. Clark. Underneath was Mackay. Simpson for Gadsby. Stands and turns. Back to Simpson. Canning. Six to go. Touch by North. Madden. Just ducking under Darren Bell. Now Benson. Over to Simpson. What can happen here? He's into a hole. Oh, I think he was a bit unlucky there, Simpson, because he, he slid out of the tackle and, uh, and probably didn't realise which way he was running at that particular time. And he's gone in behind one of his own players. Have a look at him. He comes across, is caught in the tackle, rolls around, and, and how uh, he's been pulled up for a oh. shepherd on that one, I think he's very unlucky. Well, Redcliffe have been unlucky today. They, they scored a try which looked legitimate to me just before half-time. And... That, I think, was probably the, the turning point in the game, Bruce. They had a chance to get back into the game when Crookshank went over in the corner, but Dew had ruled a forward pass. And then right on half-time, North scored, which made, uh, well, it's an eight-point turnaround. And now that try would have, is disallowed as well because 
uh, Simpson was home for your tea money. So whilst North have absolutely outplayed Redcliffe all over the park, Redcliffe have had nothing go their way. Two infringements from Michael Anderson. Now, as we said, we haven't seen a lot of Norths this year, but, gee, they're a fairly vocal side. They don't mind having a fair bit to say out there to the opposition and to anyone around. But the thing that's impressed me even more than the way they've carried the ball in this game is their commitment to defence. Uh, both the things that govern a game, uh, they're doing well. They're attacking well, but their defence is outstanding. They're really driving shoulders into tackles. And most of the talk from North 2, Bruce, is very positive. Last year, they'd spent a lot of time arguing amongst themselves about what the option was, whereas this time they're listening to Wharton and following the game plan. Hello, Gatsby and Evans. Well, I tell you what, Neil Wharton's in there. He's got a full-time job apart from playing the game, just controlling this side. They, they got short fuses. But Went. unfortunately, Redcliffe fell for the three-card trick with it. Michael Anderson being penalised for pushing a player out of the way without the ball. Well, he's been on there. He's done one good thing and three bad ones. The ledge is not looking too good for him. Hello, Mackay about to line up Anderson. My money's on a blue with Michael Anderson before full time. Can I get set? Here's Elmore again. Three out from the line. All Norths. Redcliffe have no answer. Now to Bishop. Cleary straightens the attack. Five metres out from the line is where the little fullback will play it. Evans goes to dummy half. It's through Bishop. Denty. He's still five out from the line. They're on the final tackle. My guess is I'll run it. My guess is wrong. It's a field goal from Bishop straight through that makes it 29 points to four Evans Bishop now Elmore has had a strong game been running wide with the ball Peter Elmore it's a great effect Mackay Lost it in the tackle. North have had a lot of good players today, and when we come down to uh, picking a player of the match, it's not going to be an easy task at all. There's been some outstanding individual performances on this side, as well as being a great team effort. Madden today, Canning. Well, their positional play there, Redcliffe, is dreadful because. Ravel must have been 20 metres away from Canning, so if Canning wanted to do anything with the football, he was never in a position to. Well, I think uh, the errors 19 to 11 in favour of Norse uh, tells the story when you've got a scoreline of 29 points to four. I thought the errors might have been a bit further uh, up than that from Redcliffe. Now, Crookshank. Eight out from the line. Clark, five short, Simpson, away to Madden, inside to Anderson, back to Barwick and he's under the post. Nice little pass from Anderson. It's all come too late, even though they're getting a flogging here today, they haven't, haven't had much go right for them, Norths lead Redcliffe by 29 points to eight. The key to this try, of course, is the pass of Anderson's. He's caught between the two players, turns in it, and gets a beautiful little pass up, and Barwick backs up strongly, something that hasn't happened, and scores the try for them. Well, he's copped a bit of a hiding today, Gordon Barwick. He's got cut eye and been belted. Have a look at him. He looks like he's just joined in at Custer's last stand. So he gets something out of the wreck. That would be interesting. The next time these two teams play, I want to be here. I think it could be very physical. I think Redcliffe are going to have long memories of this match. So 
uh, if things go the way uh, things look, maybe they'll meet somewhere in the semis. So before today's game, we had Redcliffe on top with 18, Valley 16, East 14 and North 12 and Brothers on 10. So North have really cemented their, their spot in the top four today. Next week's clash between North and Valleys will give us a good indicator mm. towards their semi-final prospects. Crookshank converts. North's lead, 29 points to 10. So the Redcliffe bench. Not too many smiles in there, Bruce. No, they wouldn't. Uh, I think they would be tossing up at the moment. I hope I don't get put on now. Yeah, not a lot going for you, is there? 30 minutes to go, and all you're going to do is get belted. And you can't pick up any part of a winning bonus. <laughs> Madden. I think there's a bloke called Daryl Duncan sitting on the bench for North Bruce that'd just love to have a shot now. Have a look at the big grin. He might have had his teeth done in the off-season. He's, he's got them all in. <laughs> he played in third grade today at 5'8", little tip over the top and scored. Well, when you're hot, you're hot. Greg Manpe, when you're hot, you're hot. Scotty Mackay in the middle of the field just took the ball and said, here, let's go. That's really rubbing salt into the wound. North, 33, Redcliffe, 10. Exactly what you said, Alan. The attempt to chip over the top from Madden, all it does is go into a leaping uh, Scotty Mackay who gives the pass very intelligently straight away to Manthe. He knew he wasn't going to run 35 metres, but Manthe could, and the try has scored for North. Oh, there it is, says Scotty. There's one pass, and Manthe's got too much space. Yeah, clever work from Mackay, because when he took the ball, the first thing he did was look and throw the pass, because uh, to a man that's faster, and good work for them, and a good try. Yes, we're well, just getting back to the tank, Daryl Duncan. I can't remember ever seeing him with a full set of teeth. This is this is a sensational. There he is. What talent that man's got. Come on, Daryl, give us a smile. Yeah, they're all there. <laughs> there they are. Yep. <laughs> One of the great characters of the game. Oh, there they go. <laughs> he had his fool. <laughs> Guy Harvey there. And it's over. North 35, Redcliffe 10, 11 minutes remaining. Be a good time for Tommy Radonikus to send him out. You know, Bruce, when you talk about people with talent, that man's got so much talent. If his talent matched his uh, enthusiasm, Rather, if his enthusiasm matched yeah. his talent, he'd be a test player. I tell you what, if he'd do for the coaches what he did for us, on cue, he'd be a wonderful player. <laughs> well, the real... I must, uh, I must ask him how many times he's retired and made a comeback. Ten and a half minutes remaining, North's lead 35 to 10. But Bell's just short of his own 22. Bishop actually got that pass away, fooled everybody. Evans, he won't have the speed, but I'll tell you what, Cleary won't have it either, but he's got support in Bishop. The little legs won't go. The kick's on, and Knuth should beat Dinty from the race to the ball. And it goes over the dead ball line. I tell you what, Alan, I had the pleasure of playing a season uh, or two uh, being involved with Tommy Bishop. And if this fellow's not a chip off the old block, there's nothing. He runs like him, he looks like him, and he's got the ability similar to his father. What a great play. He got here, he knew he couldn't go the distance, kicks ahead nicely, and at least give his player a chance in the race to the ball. Great play, Gary Bishop. Gadsby's back on for Redcliffe, by the way. Troy Greenwood has come on. He's in 16. It's him with the ball. Now a dummy half. Bishop back to Greenwood. Wharton standing in tackles. 
Bell. Now Bishop. Wharton Mackay. Back to Bishop. Didn't have too much going for him. Simpson just waited for him and put him to ground. Wharton again. What's Williams going to do? Elmore. Oh. I think Pete might scratch his head and wonder why he did that. He hasn't done too much wrong today, Peter Elmore. Anderson. Ravel, back to Barwick. Tony Marshall is on for Redcliffe in 16. Bevan Canning, the man replaced. Yeah, hasn't had a good game, Bevan Canning. One of his fortes is defence, and today found it wanting. So Simpson's eight short of the halfway on the final tackle. Yes, next week, Bruce, uh, Redcliffe and Valleys. That'll be a nice test. Uh, sorry, North and Valleys. That'll be a nice tester. Here's Prothero. Watch out, Pat Cleary. He's deceptive with his speed. He's got you. He's in. Oh, yes. Pretty clever footballer, this fellow, Prothero. He just decided to coast. And then a la Dale Shearer just put the foot on the pedal and he always had Cleary beaten in the run to the line. 35 to 14, the score. A little dummy kick and then away goes the pass, finds Pothero in the gap. And exactly as you called it, Alan, he sets himself there. He's going nowhere and then all of a sudden he puts the pedal down. And Cleary, whilst Cleary's got good pace, the line was just uh, too close for him and a good try. Well, he's been looking at a lot of, uh, lot of rump steak today. Poor old Mark Prothero. But he's, he's not big, but he has got the ability to slip the tackle. And he knew... He runs a little bit like Dale Shearer too when you look at him. Um, he knew that he had Cleary beaten once he put on the pedal. And we've seen a lot of him in recent weeks. He's a good footballer. And a young fellow, 19 years of age. He's not very big, but he's very strong. Able to break tackles. So 35 to 14, the score. I suppose the scoreboard looking a little bit more respectable, Bruce. Yeah, that try obviously helps, but... Uh Really, when they come uh, in this stage of the game in the last 10 minutes, there's not much uh, you can say about the defence. They've tried hard all day, Norths, and uh, they're coasting at the moment, knowing that they've carried out all the things that their coach has asked them to do. And the main thing, of course, is to come up with two competition points. You want to back Crookshank in from here? Yeah, all right, I'll go with him. He hasn't had much practice today except kicking off. Got the wind straight at him. I reckon he'll slot this. <laughs> How good's that? What a superb kick. How's that? Well, he can kick this bloke. He can kick. North 35, Redcliffe 16 and the six minutes remaining. Oh. Spear tackle, the call from Benson. Well, does that constitute a spear no. tackle? No, it doesn't because the man was definitely released. In the meantime, Redcliffe are still going. Simpson's over the halfway mark. Let's have a look and see if this was a spear tackle. Well, that's not a spear tackle. I'll walk the berth. Here's uh, Dave, just inside the quarter. I have to disagree with you, T, but I had the chance to have a look at the replay. Now it's back with Madden. Over to Marshall. Well, in my, for my money, you've got to drive the man for the spear tackle, and there was no drive in that. Marshall plays on. Three metres out. Simpson. Touched by North. Six more to go. Barwick. Try number two. A little bit of a stumble. And a bit of a jumble. And a fumble. But he's in. And North's lead 35 points to 20. Uh, North are tiring rapidly here. They've run out of puff after a big game, but uh, good work from Redcliffe. They were able to keep the ball alive, and Barwick was able to hang on to the pass. Yeah, Tommy wouldn't be impressed with this last 10 minutes. No, I, I don't uh, think necessarily think that, Rod, because he knows that they really put it in when it counted, 
and they won the game well before this and uh, and to run out of puff and go after a big effort against the competition leaders i don't think he'd be too disappointed at all but uh, full marks to uh, david simpson i thought he's probably been one of redcliffe's best players today he's made a few really good breaks he's been trying all the side in a pack of forwards that haven't been performing all that well and uh, he's had an outstanding game in a losing side Darren Shepard's on for Pat Cleary, who's uh, left with just taking a precaution on an ankle that's been troubling him of late. So Shepard is on in 19. By the way, if Crookshank can kick this, it'll be 100 points for the season. Four from four so far today. Does he know that? Well, the bench told me, so I guess he does. Mate, when you're a goal kicker, you know right down to the decimal point how many you've scored. Self-taught, by the way, no instructor. Just picked it up as he went along the grades, he tells me. Not bad, just missed. North 35, Redcliffe 20. So in the fading light, Norths bring the ball back for the restart. Now at 35 to 20, they've really cemented themselves in the top four. And also given, uh, I'd say, East and Valley's plenty to think about. Well, I certainly would, and I'd say that Ross Hendrick would have a, a close look at this video for next week's preparation, and he'll be quite surprised with what he uh, comes up and sees, I think. So the big match next week will be Norths and Valleys. Barwick showing good hands. Right on the halfway mark. If one thing has marred this game today, it's been the amount of penalties that have been given away for players. Just too much interference in the play the balls. And uh, the actual penalties, uh, we'll get the penalty count for you in a few moments. But uh, it uh, has been a very bad mark on an otherwise an excellent game. Clark. Gatsby. Just looking uh, at the match next week between, as we see Day running onto it. Stevie Day, can he push them all off? Not quite. Wharton barks orders, he wants these four tackles. Simpson, Madden, Marshall, Anderson, good defence, Norths. Redcliffe have got numbers to the right if they can move it. They go right now. Forward pass. Let's play on, and Gadsby's going to score. Well, Tony Gadsby in the score, that makes the score line Norths 35, Redcliffe 24, but a dodgy pass in there. I'd say, I'd say it'd have to be a dodgy pass. We've, we've been critical of him pulling back a couple, but this one looks yards forward. Simpson going across field, gets it there, and if that pass to Gadsby wasn't a yard forward, I'm not here. Oh, you've missed that, Mr. Dewar. Have a look at it. it well, he actually cut out Knuth to find Gadsby, and Gadsby was in front of Knuth. So uh, it had to be forward had to be at least a yard forward but Redcliffe have got it they could have missed one earlier so the ledge is squared up right on full time Crookshank with another opportunity to make it 100 points in the season penalty to the match 15 to Redcliffe and 11 to North and there's full time and just talking about that match next week when Valley's played North in the first round Valley's only beaten 22-14 so next week that might be one big game to keep your eyes on at 5 o'clock on Nines Wide World of Sports Crookshank make it 100. He does. That's the 100 points for him for the season, and that's the end of the game.
North convincing winners over Redcliffe by 35 points to 26. Herbs Devils, let's have a look at the full-time statistics and uh, the penalties favoured Redcliffe. The scrums to the Devils, tries of course favouring the Devils, they also uh, square the goals at 5 all and a field goal and the full-time scoreline 35 points to 26 and uh, Northern Suburbs coach Tommy Radonikas wasn't real impressed about Redcliffe scoring a few late tries but of course he would be happy with the man of the match. Let's cross back to Rod Tiley for that award. A great effort from the Northern Suburbs Devils this afternoon here at Lang Park. Big win over the Redcliffe side. Man of the match is second row Peter Elmore from Winfield, Pete. A great game out there, a lot of commitment. It certainly was. Thanks very much to Winfield. Uh, it was a hard game. Uh, we've been training hard for it all week with Tommy and uh, certainly paid off in the first half. We sort of let it go a bit in the second half, but uh, nonetheless we got the two points and that's what we came here to do. Mate, no place for the faint-hearted. No, it certainly wasn't. It was uh, pretty rugged in those fours and we expected it and uh, it came true. You know, it wasn't no place for the faint-hearted. Thanks very much, Winfield. Thanks, Channel 9 too. And well done, Peter. A, a great performance there today to win our man of the match. OK, let's check out all the Brisbane results. Some interesting ones today. And Souths defeated West 21 to 10. Brothers had a win over Ipswich by seven points. Valleys, big winners over winner Manly. And Logan City, they caused a bit of an upset here. A 20-all draw with Eastern Suburbs. And, of course, the Tigers toppled Valleys last weekend. Let's have a look at the points table. And we see Valleys and Redcliffe on top on 18. Then Eastern Suburbs, 15. Northern Suburbs make up the top four on 14 points. Then we've got Brothers and Souths who are still in with a little bit of a chance. And then Logan City, Wests, Ipswich and Winner Manly. Of course, a full round played in Sydney this weekend. Let's check out all the results in the Sydney Rugby League. And on Friday night, the Broncos, well, they were just sizzling against West. 30 points to 10, at 22 points to nil second half. Saturday, Penrith down Parramatta. And we've got... Uh, Results coming up from uh, today and some interesting ones at that. Manly had a big win over Balmain and big blocker roaches in trouble with the referees after a couple of indiscretions late in the game. And we've got uh, Canberra beating St George, 28 points to 12. So they took out uh, their fury after two losses in a row, did the Raiders. Newcastle, they defeated Northern Suburbs. A bit of a dent there to the North's finals chances, 28 points to 8. Cronulla, they had uh, little trouble disposing of the Gold Coast. Canterbury returned to the winner's circle, 22 points to 6 over Souths. And Illawarra, 28, defeated Eastern Suburbs, 12. Let's have a look at the points table. Brisbane with a two-point lead over Penrith. Then we've got Canberra, Balmain and Manly. Newcastle, Cronulla, Parramatta and Norths just outside the five. Well, we return back home next weekend. We head to Bishop Park for what should be a crackerjack game. Northern Suburbs, who've hit a bit of form of late. Up against Valleys, of course, Valleys are the competition leaders with Redcliffe. Kickoff at 3pm. I'll have all the highlights here on Nine's Wide World of Sports from 5 o'clock. Join us then.